director's journey as an introverted engineer who wanted to do nothing but hide behind a computer all day long, playing with numbers. But today, thanks to Toastmaster, I can stand up confidently and deliver a speech, even at a moment's notice. And this is something that has definitely enhanced my professional life. I have also benefited greatly, ladies and gentlemen, from being a leader in this organization, as I have been able to apply the significant lessons learned to my job. In fact, I would say that it's just like getting an MBA from a top business school, but at a fraction of the cost. Who can resist something like that? So come on, let's all go forward as Toastmasters and encourage other people to join us in benefit. It's definitely worth it. Back to you, Madame Toastmaster. Madame, we, we couldn't hear you. There is no voice, I think. Okay, thank you so much for that introduction, dear Lilian Shaftokova, our District One Online Director. And I want to kindly invite our keynote speaker, Andrew, with your big applause, please. We can. Thank you, Toastmaster Melton. Thank you, Toastmaster Lillian, as well, for that wonderful introduction and we're looking forward to seeing your division in your district moving forward this year. It sounds very exciting to me. Welcome everybody to your engaging voice. This is a workshop that I created to answer a question. That question is often posed in evaluations at Toastmasters International. And at Toastmasters, we tend to give people a recommendation. We say he or she, they need more vocal variety. But how do you obtain vocal variety? How do you get the most out of your voice so that online and speaking with a room, you have the greatest presence and you have the most expression when you deliver presentations in your Toastmasters Club, but also outside in, in the world and uh, in your world of work. So how do we do it? Unless someone comes to you and shows you what to do, it's very difficult to make that recommendation become part of your speaking skill set. That's what we're going to do this evening. We've got a lot to accomplish together. We are going to do a warm up routine that you can use regularly and especially on the days when you have presentations and speeches to give. We're going to be hearing this evening from a prepared speaker who I'll be allowing to do their, their prepared speech and then I'll be coaching them on screen on some vocal aspects. We've got plenty of exercises to do together. There'll be a breakout moment where we do some exercises on modulation. We're gonna have some table topics later on with vocal evaluation, especially for the occasion. And there'll also be a little question and answer session. I think it's time we made a start, don't you? How are you feeling, more lively? Yes, that's it. I like to see you on the Zoom. That's great, I like to see you in gallery view. Okay, we're gonna make a start. Now, if you were going to play a musical instrument, you would learn to hold your instrument so that you can make the most beautiful sounds, wouldn't you? It's a bit the same with your voice. We begin with our posture, our body alignment, how we look. Now, we live in a world where we're online and on computer an awful lot. I'm sure that with your jobs, a lot of you spend a lot of time on camera and on the computer. And sometimes our posture isn't so good. So we're gonna find the best posture for our voices to start off this workshop. What I want you to do first of all, you can kick off your shoes like I'm doing now. You're in the, your own home. No reason why you shouldn't kick off your shoes. Feel the ground underneath your feet nice and solidly. That's good. And your feet should be no more than shoulder width apart. No more than shoulder width apart because we're going to create a nice column. And this will be the same whether we're sitting or standing. So that's great. First of all, let's just flex our shoulders backwards and forwards a little. That's good. We need to do a little bit of this, don't we? You'll feel as you do it, that it just opens out and elongates your spine. And that's good 
because your voice box where your vocal folds are is attached actually to the spine. So it's good for us to do this to start off with. Tell you what, I've got another little exercise for you as well. We're gonna just, just watch me. We're gonna drop our head onto our chest. We're gonna take it to the right, the center, the left and the center, nice and slowly. Think we can do that? I'm gonna watch you this time. I'm gonna line it out for you. So gently drop your head down onto your chest. Let me see you go. Great. Take it to the right and the center and the left and the center. That's good as well. That's also opening out the spine for us. And that little exercise you can use because we sometimes get that little knot at the bottom of our neck, the top of our spine, because we've been on online and we've been looking down or not in a good position. So that's a good one for loosening up in that situation. Well done, everybody. You're already starting to look a lot lot brighter. I'm pleased to see that. Good. So the next thing we're going to do is wake up our face muscles. I promise you, you will never get a really nice, warm, engaging voice from a very flat face. Face muscles are important. What we're working on is centers of resonance here. So I'm going to get you to screw your face into a ball. Hmm. Really go for it. Oh, that's splendid. And then we're going to slowly, slowly release every muscle. Slow, slow, slow. Till we come back to normal. Slow, slow, slow. Yeah, and it does sometimes help to pop your glasses off as well when you do this one so you don't get <laughs> scrunched up with your glasses. That's good. Let's do that one again. Shall we really screw your face up in the ball for me? Go on. Good. And slowly, slowly, let's release each muscle till we come back to normal. Oh, that's very, very good. Here we come. Fantastic. What we're going to do now is we're going to just release this area of the jaw a little bit. This is the jawbone. And I want you to just gently massage, bring it downwards. Isn't this nice? This is the lovely bit of the workshop. It's all so relaxing after your day and it's doing you good and it's getting us ready for speaking. Ah, yeah, that's nice. That's really nice. Well done, everybody. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a little think about breath. Now, a lot of things are said about breathing for singers, breathing for speakers, and a lot of them are very confusing. In this workshop, we go for the straightforward recipe. So here we go. There is your thumb. I would like you to place your thumb under your lowest rib at the side. So the bottom of your rib cage at the side, okay? You take your thumb, put it there. Yep. Make sure you stay nice and relaxed over your shoulders as you do it. That's it, we don't need to tense. That's good, just nice and relaxed. We'll do nice upward posture, that's nice. Good. This one is the next finger from your thumb. It goes into the hip socket, you know, where if you were wearing jeans or something like that, you'd or trousers, into your hip socket, okay? So I've got one under the lowest rib at the side and one in the hip socket. Good. That's it. I'm taking a look at everybody as we go. That's lovely. We're going to breathe out first. Just breathe out, let all the air go. Let it go. Then when I count to three, we're going to breathe in slowly. And use the nose and the mouth as you breathe in. That's fine. We go one, two, three, breathe in. And I want you to feel expansion at that lowest rib. Breathe out. Let it all go. Nice, breathe out. When you do it, it's really important to keep your shoulders back and relaxed because that brings your rib cage forwards, which is better for taking the breath. Good, you're doing well. Let's do it again. We're going for a nice low breath. The reason I do this for you is because a lot of us in daily life, we breathe very high in the chest, very rapid breaths when we're talking. And in fact, when we're speaking, we need much more poise is the word I like to use. We need our breath to be nicely settled to nourish our voice as we speak. 
So that's why we do this. So you've got your thumb there and the finger in the hip socket. Yeah, ready? Breathe out first. Lovely, and here we go. One, two, three, breathe. Now it's just a bit of expansion at that lower rib. It's not a huge thing. We don't need to breathe in a lot of air, but it's low, it's a low breath. It's gone from a chesty breath up here to being a low breath down there. That's gonna nourish your voice as you speak. You're doing rather well at this. I can see you all on camera. And so we're going to start making some sounds with that breath. Now, good thing to do when you're warming up is to hum. I don't know if you like humming, but you can hum your favorite tune. I had to try and find something that we all might know today. Does everyone know happy birthday to you? Can, do you think we can hum happy birthday to you together? I think we can. And you're all on mute for the moment. So nobody can hear you singing. You're fine. You can make sounds and enjoy it. OK, no one's going to be listening in to you. Great. So I'm going to lead the way. And we're just going to have a nice resonant hum. Remember that nice low breath. You can relax your hand now. Relax the thumb and finger. Relax the arms. That's good. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna start, ready? One, two, three, breathe. Mm -hmm. You have a go. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not bad, but you know, I'm sure we can get some more resonance as we warm up our voice with that hum. So I'm going to get you, first of all, to take a breath and blow your lips out. It's a bit like on a cold day. See if you can never go at that one. OK, ready? Ready to breathe. One, two, three. Off you go. Let me see you do it. And I'm going to have a look at my gallery view to check how we're doing. Yes. That's it. Nice and loose. This will help us with our articulation later as well. But I'm loosening up the lips so we can get a nice, loose lipped, relaxed hum, which will have more resonance on the sound. Here we go. So we're going to go back to happy birthday. We're going to go all the way through happy birthday this time. We're going to really get those resonators working. Ready to breathe? One, two, three. Keep going. Good. We're starting to make sounds, resonant sounds. This is a great way of warming up your voice. The hum is a good way to warm the voice up without putting any pressure on at all. So make sure you use that one in your warm up times. OK, we're going to move on now. We're going to take some voiced consonants and vowels. Now, what on earth do I mean by voiced consonants? Voiced consonants are the ones that you can make a continued sound on, like the M of the humming, mm, and the N, mm, and the L. Mm. They're consonants we can make a long sound of, voiced consonants. I'm going to mix them up with some vowels for you, because we can do some vowels now. We're getting ready. And then I want you to repeat after me. OK, so I line it out. You repeat after me. Me, ma, mo, mu. Let me do it one more time for you so you hear it well. Me, ma, mo, mu. Your go. Me, ma, mo, mu. OK, not bad. We can get that even better. Make sure you've got your nice low breath installed. No sort of tense breath here, nice and low in the body. Here we go. Me, me, ma, mo. Your go. Me, me, ma, mo. Not bad at all. Here we come to the N sound, the N. Ni, ne, na, no. Once more. Ni, ne, na, no. Your go. Ni, ne, na, no. Great. We're going to do the L in a minute. But before we do tackle that L, I'm going to get you to loosen your tongue a little bit. So I am going to let you do what your mum told you never, ever to do. I'm going to let you stick out your tongue. 
we're going to release the tongue because a lot of folks when they speak have their tongue bunched up very far back in the throat and that stops the voice from flowing comfortably. So I'm going to count to three and we're going to stick out a tongue. We take it to the left and center, right and center. Here we go. Okay. One, two, three. Here we go. Uh, that's good. And then you take it back in and you'll need to swallow after that one. Let's do it one more time, just to make sure that the tongue is nice and loose and not blocking our throat. Great work. Well done, everybody. At that point, I hope you've got some water with you. I did say that we should bring glasses of water or bottles of water. Make sure you have some water with you during the workshop. It's essential. Why? Because your voice box and your vocal folds only work well when there's humidity. So when we're working on our voice, we have a little sip of water. Excellent work. We're progressing well here. I'm very pleased about this. Now, what haven't we done yet in our warm up? We haven't done any consonants. Consonants, the sounds like our t, our d, our s. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard sometimes people using a microphone and they make that kind of popping noise when they say the consonants. And often it's because they're trying a bit too hard and they're kind of spitting the consonants out. And whether we're in a room or whether we're online like this, that's not very efficient. What we want are light, precise consonants that make our words nice and clear. We're going for verbal clarity here. So I've got a little exercise for you. I'm going to line the words out and I want you to repeat them after me. Here we go. Pitta, patter, potter. Once more, I'll say it. Pitta, patter, potter. Your go. Pitta, patter, potter. Good. Next one is batter, bitter, better. Batter, bitter, better. Your go. Breathe. Batter, bitter, better. Good. And the last one is clipper, clopper, clatter. Clipper, clopper, clatter. Your go. Clipper, clopper, clatter. So we work for nice, light, precise consonants that make our voices sound nice and clear in the room. We don't need to go really spitting out those T's and those D's and making it harder for us. If you try to overdo your consonant, you'll find it's what we call the law of diminishing returns. It sounds less clear in the room or online. So those are nice, light and precise. We work for precision. All of these comments that I'm giving to you now and these little exercises as we work our way into the workshop are on an article which I'm going to give you a copy of. In fact, um, Melton will be sending you a copy of my article about vocal variety after this workshop. And you will have a summary of the warm up and also some ideas to take you well beyond as well as you're working on your on your speeches, okay? And on your vocal variety and on your vocal presence online. So you're going to have something in hand to take away with you as well today from this session. Good work. We've been doing a nice warm up there. I think that now I think we should do a rhyme and it's a rhyme for vocal range. Now, have you heard speakers who tend to sit on one note all the time and they speak, they've got very dull voices, they all sounds on one sound. It's not very interesting. Well, this is the exercise that will help us really wake up our voices and gain in vocal range. A healthy voice has lower tones, middle tones and higher tones. So that whatever presentation or speech we're giving, whatever emotion we're expressing, We've got all the range of our voice, and that's what we're working on in this session. So I'm going to line out the rhyme. It's a bit of a nonsense rhyme, but it allows us to go up and down in the voice. I'm going to give you a line, and you will repeat it back. Are you ready? Everybody there? Great. So here we go. Does the man in the moon like music? I'll do it again. 
And make sure, do you remember the M's that we had in our humming? Make sure you make a lot of the sounds. Okay, I'll, re I'll say it to you once more. Does the man in the moon like music? You repeat. Does the man in the moon like music? Good. Next line. Does he tootle on his flute? Hear it again. Does he tootle on his flute? Your go. Does he tootle on his flute? Great. Or does he croon? Listen again. Or does he croon? Your go. Or does he croon? Great. We're going to take those two lines first and make sure we've got them fixed in our minds. This is also on the sheet you're going to be receiving. Does the man in the moon like music? Your go. Does the man in the moon like music? Does he tootle on his flute? Or does he croon? Good, you're getting the hang of it. Two more lines, we'll be there. We'll have a whole rhyme. Does he slip in something lunar? Listen again. Does he slip in something lunar? Your go. Does he slip in something lunar? Good. In the way he plays his tune. Listen. In the way he plays his tune. Your go. In the way he plays his tune. So as a whole sentence, that gives us, does he slip in something lunar in the way he plays his tune? Let's have a try. Does he slip in something lunar in the way he plays his tune? Good. Or does he simply sit and doodle? Listen. Or does he simply sit and doodle? Your go. Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? On the moon. Your go. On the moon. Good. I'm going to continue lining it out for you. One of the ways I get you to open up your vocal range and your vocal variety is by working on your ear. Now, a lot of the conversation that we have in daily life, think about it. It's what we tend to call over here mundane. It's not very exciting things. And people don't need to make much of an effort to listen, really. We can listen on a surface level. But what I want is for us to get much better at listening so that we hear our voices more clearly and can find more expression. And that's why I work with you this way. So here we go. We're going to do the rhyme again. You ready? Nice, relaxed good posture, good buoyant posture. You, you can think of your posture and nice, your nice well-placed placed feet going up through the back of your legs, up through your spine, shoulders back and relaxed, and your head crowning your body. That's not stiff or military in posture. It's just comfortable and well-supported and nice for speaking. Okay, great. We're going to do the man in the moon. Does the man in the moon like music? You go. Does the man in the moon like music? Does he tootle on his flute? Your go. Or does he croon? Does he slip in something lunar? Your go. In the way he plays his tune? Your go. Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? Great. We're going to do the whole thing. We're going to go up, down, round about. You're going to follow the sound of my voice. Nice, low breath. Follow the sound of my voice. Up and down we go together in the rhyme. So I'll line it out for you. Does the man in the moon like music? Your go. Does the man in the moon like music? Great. Does he tootle on his flute? Does he tootle on his flute? Or does he croon? Your go. Or does he croon? 
You're good. Does he slip in something lunar? Your go. Does he slip in something lunar? In the way he plays his tune, your go. In the way he plays his tune. Or does he simply sit and doodle? Your go. Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? On the moon. Good. So that's a little rhyme you can use to flex about with your voice, to get flexibility and have more range. So that if your voice does tend to sit on one or two notes, well, there you're going to, over a period of time, through practice, gain more notes in the sound of your voice. And that's going to be exciting for you. Well done, everybody. This is good work that you're doing for us this evening. I think that we're doing so well. It's high time that we all came off mute and we've got an exercise we can do together, unmuted. Are you ready? Everybody unmute, please. That's great. Open up those microphones. Because I like to hear a little bit of the sound of you in the room as well. It's good. Well done, everybody. So if everybody's opened up, that's great. If you can, we're going to do a game together and it's called the meal game. I am. This is a game which is about attaching emotions to words. So I am going to give you one of the courses of the meal and an emotion with which you have to say it. OK, now in the preparation notes for this, this workshop, I suggested that you bring along either a photo of someone you like or you can even bring along a cuddly toy. There you are. I have Toastmasters Convention Bear for you this evening. He comes to all my workshops with me. I'm going to put him by the side of my laptop. And that is my audience, because I don't want all sort of things sated on the, on the gallery view this evening as we do the exercise. So here we go. We're going to do the meal game. I'm going to give you a, an item of the meal and an emotion, a direction of how you're to say it to your picture or your teddy or whatever you're speaking on the side of your computer. Are you ready? We're going to begin the meal game and we're going to have a bowl up. Now, we have got someone who's got speaking going on in the background. If you have chatting going on in the background, please do mute your microphone so that everyone can hear me. That's better. That's clear. Lovely. So the first item of the meal is a bowl of soup. But you know something? It's not just any soup. It's the most hilarious bowl of soup you have ever tasted. It's hilarious. And I want you to give me this hilarious bowl of soup. So over to you now. It's a bowl of soup and it's hilarious. And I want to hear you laugh. <laughs> bowl of soup. Come on. It's a bowl of soup. Let me hear you. Let me hear those voices. Bowl of soup. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Come on. I'm not hearing oh, you. Soup, it's ridiculous. Oh, soup, soup. Oh, yeah, that's it. Now you're underway. Oh, that's a bowl of soup. <laughs> bowl of soup. Have you ever heard anything more ridiculous than that? <laughs> yes, let's really go for it. Come on, I'm not hearing enough of you. Come on, bowl of soup. Bowl of soup. Bowl of soup. Oh, oh, ridiculous. That's it. Well oh, done. Soup is ridiculous. <laughs> it is. Well done. That's good. That's our start. The next thing is going to be um, roast lamb. But it's not just any roast lamb. This is cold roast lamb, okay? It's the lamb from the day before. It's cold roast lamb and it's freezing. So what I want to hear now are the really cold qualities in your voice when it's really cold and everything's freezing. So it's cold roast lamb, cold roast lamb. Do you think, give me some cold roast lamb, please? I'm muting, give me some cold roast lamb. Come on, folks. Cold roast lamb, let me oh, hear it. Cold roast lamb. Oh, oh, now you do. Cold roast lamb. It's freezing. Oh, it's freezing cold. It's freezing. Yes. yes, that's it. The cold qualities. And after the cold qualities, we have to warm up again. We have the warm qualities in the voice. So I thought we might have some apple pie and it's warm apple pie okay would you like to say some warm apple pie let me hear it warm apple pie warm apple pie warm apple pie warm apple pie your most warm qualities remember the uh, the m we did at the beginning of the workshop 
it was mm, it was warm <laughs> mm, warm qualities resonant qualities once more warm apple pie come on come with it warm apple pie oh, yes oh, I love okay. the, explore the warm qualities and then I thought we might have some cheese and biscuits. Okay, we're going to have some cheese and biscuits now. But they're not just any cheese and biscuits. I don't know if you've seen the price of cheese in the shops recently. It's outrageous. So we're going to have cheese and biscuits. And these are the most outrageous cheese and biscuits you've ever had in your life because they've been so expensive. Cheese and biscuits. Can you get outrage into your voice for me? Outrage. Cheese and biscuits. Come on, let me hear you. Cheese and biscuits. Cheese, cheese and, and biscuits. biscuits. Cheese and biscuits. Cheese and biscuits. Really outrageous. Cheese and biscuits. Cheese and biscuits. Cheese and biscuits. Yes. Cheese and biscuits. Now it's coming. Well done. Well done. And after that, well, you've eaten a lot of food, so you're a bit sleepy. And to round it off, maybe you'll have some hot chocolate, you know, cocoa hot chocolate to, to wind down. You're going to be sleepy. So it's very sleepy. Oh, we're going to get to those sleepy sounds now in the voice, the sleepy sounds. Hot chocolate. Very sleepy hot chocolate, please. You have a go. Oh, hot chocolate, oh. sleepy time, oh. is it? Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh, Gets you into the feeling of those breathing muscles as well when you yawn. It's a very sleepy hot chocolate. Give it to me again. Come on. Hot chocolate, sleepy. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Oh, Hot chocolate. Oh, yeah. Hot chocolate. Yeah, that's oh, nice. chocolate. So we've been exploring some different types of expression in our voice and the meal game. Well, that's just fun to help us do it. Well done. You've done very well there. So I think that now we'll take another sip of water because we'll need it. Good. This is the way we explore our voices and we explore our vocal impact through these exercises. We need to explore the range of our voices. We need to explore the quality of our voices. We're working towards best quality sound as well. We'd all like to have a nice warm and resonant quality to our voices when we're speaking, whether we're online or whether we're in a room. That's part of our presence. You know, your voice really reflects you to your audience and that's why we work and we expand and we find the different qualities in our voice together and you're doing really well at this this evening great we've done the meal game now i'm wondering is nubano there nubano's got a speech extract for me is nubano here yet i haven't seen her on the uh or maybe she's in the in the the room with you where you're doing Nubano is coming to do a speech extract this evening. I'm ready, Andrew. Are you there? That's great. Right. I would like Nubano spotlighted on camera with me, please. Spotlighting, please, Mr. Zoom Master, if we can, so that we've got her on the screen alongside me. Can we do that? Can someone help me? Because we're in a record right now. And it's long. There we are. Hey, it's great. It's great to have you here. Splendid, Nubanu. So you have a two-minute speech extract for us. I'm going to let you run with this speech extract. And then afterwards, we're going to do a little bit of work on it, looking at the vocal perspectives of the speech extract together. We're going to try some exercises and things out together. So I think we should first of all start by giving Nubanu a really huge round of applause. So I want to see your virtual waves, folks, because this is great. This is really stepping up. This is a Toastmasters tradition, stepping up to do things. It's brave and it's great. And I'm really pleased to see you on camera. So your speech this evening, Nibano, is called Disease of the Age. Disease of the Age. And it's going to be over to you. I'm going to go on mute while you deliver it. I'll stay. Can someone confirm that? Is my voice well right now? A bit louder? Okay. Just a little bit more volume on you, please. That would be nice. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will try to shout out because we're in a physical place. It's going to be hard to make it a lot. Okay. It's difficult when you're in the room live like that. Okay. That's good. I'm okay, hearing guys. you. Okay, guys. If I ask you, what is the disease of 21st century? What would your answer be? Loneliness? Obsessive compulsive disorders, 
yup the flu? These are the top three answers when you Google it. However, my answer is different. Forgetfulness. Developing technology has been made us accustomed to the fact that relying on the devices, calendars in our devices, instead of our, brain, our brains. They're actually not helping us. Smartphones are damaging our brain's ability to retain any information. If you rely on the devices rather than your memory, you actually fail to learn that information. This explains why you have been visited, why even you visited your favorite restaurant many times and still using your Google Maps to get there, right? We do not train our memories to recall any information. Rather than doing this, we train our memories to rely on external tools to do this for us. So what are we gonna do? How will we any strategy to improve our memory? First one, better mining your learning method. There is a model called WARC, which divides your learning method into vocal, auditory, reading, writing, and kinesthetic. Then what I can help you to understand most effective way of learning. Another strategy is prioritizing information based on its freshness, not on importance. Because the research shows that memorizing an information as soon as you learn it is more beneficial than trying to learn it, trying to remember it after doing another thing. And the last strategy is repetition, which is a very important exercise when it comes to learning anything. Never forget, when the time comes, your phone will never gonna replace a correct recall. Thank you. Really well done. Such a great speech extract, nice thing for us to work on together. The first thing I absolutely liked is that you came on and you were immediately engaging and you had a smile and that smile brightens the tone of the voice as well. So that was a great start to make. I've got a couple of suggestions for you. We're going to set up the beginning of the speech again. The reason that I'm going to encourage you to do that is because I find that you're speaking a little bit quickly at times. Yeah, and I think we need to slow it down. One of the things that will help to do it, a way of doing it, is you've got three things in your opening there. You've got loneliness, obsessive compulsive disorder, and yuppie flu. They're three very different things, aren't they? So they should sound different because they're different things entirely. Loneliness is one thing, yeah? Obsessive compulsive disorder is another thing. That's more of an active thing, really. And yuppie flu. Yeah. They're three different things. So I think that it might also help you in terms of your pacing, if you think of it that way. Three different things, because you gave us them as a list. And one of the things that I'm going to say to everybody this evening is that when you have lists of things in your speech, it does tend to dry up the vocal variety a bit, just because you're listing. And it also might make us speak a bit quickly. So why not try and find in your thoughts, and this is about working with your intentions. Our voices reflect the intention, what we mean to say. They're very good, our voices, at following us, providing we have the thought first, okay? So why don't we set up that opening and you try and find some, the way of thinking about those three things so that they're different. We've got loneliness, we've got the obsessive compulsive disorder, and we've got the yuppie flu. And let's just see if we can find a bit more space around and, and uh, yeah, space around that opening section. Would you like to have another go at it? You're ready, you're up for this? You're doing well. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, give it a go. We're experimenting, we're finding things, okay? I'm gonna, so gonna try, try to give the feeling what I feel when I saw that words, right, actually? Yeah, oh, that's right. it, you're reflecting the feeling and the thought that you, those words bring to you, and that will come into your voice. If I ask you, what is the disease of 21st century? What would your answer be? 
loneliness, obsessive compulsive disorder, yuppifly. Yeah, are... You see, that works. Nibbana, that works, okay? Yeah. Um, when you did loneliness, you need to be careful that you do articulate it so that we can hear. The quality was right. I just needed more L at the beginning, yeah? Because it, it, I lost a little bit of the L. But the quality was exactly right. The expression is right. Do it again, because it's good. I'd like to really catch hold of that. So do that one more time. If I ask you, what is the disease of 21st century? What would your answer be? Loneliness, obsessive compulsive disorder, yuppifly. These are the top three answers when you Google it. Is it better? It's good. Now, these are the top three when you Google it. My answer is different, forgetfulness. That's the point you're taking us to, isn't it? In intention and expression in the line, you want us to get to forgetfulness because that's yep. your main point. So after you've done yuppie flu, keep on the same track pace wise and take us through to the end of your sentence. Yeah, because you once again, you did it really well. You, you got to yuppie flu and then you started to race again. These are the top three when you Google it. <laughs> if you race, we won't follow you to your point. We can only absorb so many words really at a time. But the most important thing is we hear the expression in your voice because it helps us to absorb your words. Okay, you're doing it really well. Um, can you set it up again? Go from loneliness, go from loneliness. You're doing really well. Okay. Um, loneliness, obsessive compulsive disorder, Yuppifly, these are the top three answers for when you Google it. However, my answer is different, forgetfulness. Yeah, that's the point you're taking us to. So it's my answer is different. You know, Google says this, my answer is this, forgetfulness. And I think when you get to that word, you can really make something of it because it's your keyword. We all have to, when we write speeches, and this is a well-written speech, you know, you, you've written this, beautifully when we write speeches sometimes going from what we've written on a page what we've written on a page into the way we speak it there's a kind of a little gap even though we've written the words ourselves and we need to get ourselves and project ourselves into the expression and that's what we're doing now and that means that vocally you open up a lot more OK, so, yeah, you're going towards forgetfulness. That is your key word in that sentence. That's the thought you want us to grab hold of. I'm going to ask you to do it from the beginning once more and just go to that point. OK. okay. From the question part or just the loneliness part? Go from the beginning so you get a run into it and then, you know, okay. you've got control of the pacing. If I ask you, what is the disease of 21st century? What would your answer be? Loneliness, obsessive compulsive disorder, yep, the flu. These are the top three answers when you Google it. However, my answer is different. Forgetfulness. Yeah, that's fine. Be careful of the word Google. I need to hear the ooh sound, Google, because it's a little bit Google. It's a, it's a little bit flat at the moment. Ooh, Google. That's good. Well done. Great stuff. As you went on, you gave us some nice pauses in the middle section. And I'd like you to find those pauses. Pause moments allow you to regain your energy for the next sentence and the next key idea. And they allow us the time to drink in your words as your audience. So I'd like you to find a little bit more. Let's go on to developing technology and see if we can find the space so that we're not rushing ahead with the phrases. Um, in the developing technology section uh, has made us very accustomed to the fact that we rely on our calendars in our phones instead of relying on our brains. So, in fact, you're going towards the idea of relying on our brains in that second sentence. That's where you need to, to slightly slow down, and make the point to us. Can you do that from developing technology, please? OK. Developing technology has made us accustomed to the fact that relying on calendars in our smartphones instead of relying on our brains. Yeah. And I would use emphasis there, 
relying on our brains. And I would really go for the word brains because brains is the key word in your sentence. It's useful to look at your script, okay, when you're practicing, because this is something that people often miss out as well, Nibano, is that we get people who write brilliant speeches, but they don't practice them enough. Um, I'm not saying that about you, but that's what happens quite a lot in Toastmasters, <laughs> okay? The practice is vital because it allows us to come from the written word on the page into the body and the voice and the expression. So I would say you need to look at your script and work out what is the key word or idea in every section. And you, as you present the speech and share it with us, are going towards that word or key idea. Because that way it becomes, how can I describe it to you? When it works, it's like a ringing bell. The idea comes and we hear it. And it's like a ringing bell, the idea, it comes alive. It brings the words alive for us. And that's what I'm wanting for you. That was starting to work well. So we've got to the brains. Now, the reality is smartphones are damaging. Yeah, carry on. We've got just a couple more minutes to carry on a little way with this. I'm enjoying this, you're doing well. The reality is smartphones are damaging your brain's ability to retain in important details. If people rely on devices to remember things, they actually fail to learn that information. And you're starting to allow some space around your sentence. Well done. That's what I wanted to achieve vocally with you. That is really good. You know, and, and it will seem sometimes to you, it will seem as if you're stretching out the sentence a bit too much. But I promise you for your audience, it's enough because they're absorbing the ideas and your words. Yeah, it's the same with use of pauses. And incidentally, everybody, as well as the Vocal Variety article, at the end of this session, you'll be receiving my article about the use of pauses. And it's, it's true that when we allow this much space around our sentences and use of pause and use a pause sometimes, that it seems a long while to us, the pause, from our side as a speaker, it seems a long while. But to the audience, it doesn't seem long at all because they're thinking about what you said to them. Yeah? So that's good, we're going there. So we, let's go on to, um, we don't train, we do not train our memory to recall information. Yeah, let's take it from there, let's do that. And then I'll let you do the MB bit. We do not train our memory to recall information. Rather than doing this, we train our memory to rely on external tools that do this for us. See, that's good. That's really good, really good in terms of finding pacing, yeah, which is the vocal effect that I wanted to do. That's good. Great stuff. I think you've worked very well on this. Would you like to round up the speech for us? Okay. So how about go an, another strategy? Another strategy is prioritizing. Keep this sense of flow. Your voice is sounding very nice. I can tell you've been doing the warm-up exercises. <laughs> okay. So... Let's go for prioritizing information based on its freshness and just keep the, the gentle sense of flow. Remember, you're going towards your key ideas. They are the ones that you magnify with your voice. Okay. Another strategy is prioritizing information based on its freshness, not its importance. Because the research shows that memorizing information as soon as you learn it is more beneficial than trying to remember it after doing an auto job. Keep going, let's round it off, let's finish it. The last one is repetition, which is a very important exercise when it comes to the learning and new information. Never forget, when it comes to, when a time comes, your phone never replaces the correct recall. Yes, and there you're using emphasis on certain words, and that emphasis is working, and we're getting your message. So the takeaways from the session, look for the keywords because they'll help you with the pacing. Look for the moments when you can give us a moment to breathe with a pause, yeah? So we're talking about the pacing and the vocal delivery, the emphasis becomes much better because we know where the key ideas are 
from your voice. They're reflected in your intention and in your voice. Great work. I think we should give you a huge round of applause because you did fantastically there. Hey, they're all waving. It's great. It's great. Good. We're going to move on now. Uh, at the beginning of the session, I put a file into the chat. I'll do it again now, but I hope that most of you received this when you signed up for the workshop. There is a file which is called Your Engaging Voice and it's tips and exercise sheet. I can just pop that back into the, here we come. I'll pop that back in again so that you can take it if you haven't got it. Preparation and exercises, there we are, open. That's great, it's there now. Make sure you download it because we're going to need it in this next section of workshop. What I would like to do is some exercises about modulation. Modulation is about the way we pace our speech and it reflects the way we use the tone of our voices as we're giving an idea across. So if you open up that file, on the second page of the file, it says exercise sheet. Here we go, let me see if I can get it on screen for you. Exercise sheet, okay? And on the exercise sheet, there's one, two, three exercises. What we're going to do in a moment is that you're going to go into breakout rooms. You'll be in groups of four. One person will take exercise one, another person will take exercise two, and two people will take exercise three because exercise three is a dialogue. You're going to each take a turn, try out the exercises. And we're in Toastmasters here. What do we like in Toastmasters? We like feedback. So you're going to give each other some feedback. For those who are guests here this evening, we're loving to see you this evening. And at Toastmasters, when we give feedback, we tend to give a commendation first, something the person did well. And then we give them a recommendation, which is a piece of advice of how they might do something better. So make sure when you go into the breakout room that you're going to give each other commendations and recommendations. One person takes exercise one, one person takes exercise two, and two people take exercise three. Before I let you go, I'm going to model the exercises for you so that you know what they're about, okay? I hope you've all been able to open up the file and you've got it so you'll take it with you into your breakout rooms. The first exercise is about rapid changes of thought. Sometimes when we're telling a story, an anecdote in our speech, we've got rapid changes of thought going on. That's what this is about. Listen to exercise one. Now, I think I left it on the bus. Let me see. I had it at lunch because I remember putting it under my chair. And then the waitress picked it up and she gave it to me. And then we went to Debenhams. So in there, there's a lot of changes of thought going on rapidly. And if we want our voices to reflect the meaning, we have to change thought quickly with it. It's a good exercise for us. The next one, number two, did you know that you can see purely with your voice? That's what this exercise does. We're going to see with our voices. You listen to me. I can't quite reach. Oh, it's just too far. Hold on. If I stretch a little bit, hold my foot, will you? Uh, that's right. Ooh, look, I'm slipping. Help. Hang on. Whew. Well, that was a near thing. So I'm seeing with the sound of my voice. You can do that too. Try it out in the breakout. And the last one, exercise three. I like to think of this as as burglars trying to break into a house. So you've got two characters for this one. Are you there? Yes. It's all right, they're asleep. The stairs, talk softly. I was only going to say the stairs squeak horribly. Have you got everything? I think so. I was terrified of making a noise. Look out, you're going to drop. Oh. So we've got a dialogue as well. Dialogue is great for creating vocal variety. Okay, so 
Oh, someone's asking about the break. We will take a break, but it will be just after the breakout session, okay? We will be doing a break before we go into our table topics, okay? That's great. So we're gonna go into the Zoom rooms now. Four to a Zoom room, please. All right, thank you, Zoom Master, if you'd like to send folks now. There you go. That's great. Just a few more people to transfer, I think, are we, or are we? I'm just seeing a few more people on my Zoom screen. Or are we all staying in the main room, Zoom Master? What's happening? Are we sending folks through? Okay, well, let's make a start here with the folks that have stayed in this room. That would be great. All right. So we will, ah, we're being sent, I think. There we go.
Fantastic. There we come. Is everybody back? That was rather brief, but it was good. Great. So someone was asking about a break. Let's take five minutes at this point before we go into the second part and do our table topics. Should we take five minutes? Okay, everybody, have a five minute breather, have some more water and uh, a comfort break, five minutes from now. So we come back together again. Uh, well, actually, let's come back together in six minutes time. Yeah, great. Mm. Andrew, uh, did we give coffee break? Yeah, six minutes. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it was very Good. successful, thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Great. Um, so yeah, in six minutes time, we'll pick up again. We'll do the table topic sequence then, okay? Do you need any help? Uh, uh, well, I have a topic master, don't I? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, when you tell me that everybody's back in the room, Thank you so much. Thank you. But, Thank you. Yeah, when you tell me everyone's back in the room, then I'll start off again. We'll do the topic session. We'll do the vocal feedback on the topics. Okay. Thank you we're so doing, much. We're doing well on our timing. We're fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. And my topics master is Osgun. Osgun Kaplama is here waiting for his turn. Thank you so much, Andrew. <laughs> That's great. So you're doing hybrid meeting. This is our second hybrid meeting, but uh, Istanbul is very cold, very rainy. It is unbelievable cold. Uh, for that reason, uh, we want to continue hybrid meetings. Thank you. It was very helpful. It is the second time we try this year. Oh, you're doing well. It takes a while to sort out a hybrid meeting. One of my clubs does hybrid. Experience French, which I was at last night, and we do hybrid. And, and uh, it takes a little while to get everybody into the habit. Andrew, Chantal sent uh, her best wishes to you, Chantal. Ah, good. Well, we I, did ex I did send her a happy new year um, and she sent me a happy new year. And I will see Chantal at Excalibur on yes, Wednesday. Yes, we will make combined meeting next Tuesday. France, Istanbul and Bosphorus combined meeting. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. All the I best. love that. I love that club. <laughs> yes, they are nice. I love They're Paris nice. La Défense. They're a great, great club. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. What we're going to do is we'll do the table topics and then I'll do question and answer and then I'll round up my part of the workshop, okay? Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Andrew. Good. It's good. You okay now, Ahmad? You've been in Toastmasters for a while. good that's good i'm out i'm going to send you my contact okay
That's good. Okay, folks, in about one minute, we shall come back again and start our second sequence. So wherever you are, come back to us. Is everybody here? Folks need to open up their cameras <laughs> so we know you're there. Here we come. Okay, folks, everyone back? Okay, folks, if you're coming back to us, please do open up your cameras so that we can see that you're there, ready? That's great. Let's make a start. Ah, good. There we come. A few more, maybe, and then we shall start off again with our topic session. Okay, let's make a start. The second part of this workshop is going to allow us all to continue to put into practice what we learned about our voices in the first half. So we're going to be delivering some table topics. What are table topics? Table topics is the art of impromptu speaking, speaking without preparation on a topic that's given by a topic master. As you do these topics, whoever is going to take the topic, make sure that you have good posture, You've got your nice low breath and your, respond, your voice is responding to your intentions and your feelings as you deliver the topic for us. Now, I have someone to help me with this. I'm going, what we're going to do is we're going to do some topics and then I'm going to give voice feedback so that the topic speakers will all get a little bit of individual feedback on what they do vocally today and sum up some ideas for us. Okay, so I have a topics master today. Topics master is Osgun. Kaplama, are you there? Here he comes. That's good. Okay, I'm handing over to you and Timekeeper, and you'll be choosing and delivering, giving us the topics for our speakers today. Thank you. Can we hear your voice? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we need a little bit more than that, actually. Okay. Can uh, you hear me now? We can hear you when you're closer. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to our meetings again after a coffee break. I'm Özgün, Özgün Kaplama from Istanbul Toastmasters. I am Vice President of Education. And tonight, I will be your table topic master. So I will ask you some questions, both you 
in our Zoom meeting and also from the uh, audience in the place where we exist. And I will start with first question. And I will start, I will start with the place where we exist. My first question is, what is public speaking means for you? What is public speaking means for you? So I will pick uh, from the audience, Tom. So, Hello again, do you hear me? What does public speaking mean to me? My answer is definitely in one word, nightmare. Why? Because that was my biggest fear. I always saw nightmares before I had to do a presentation. Now, now I'm a Toastmasters member for five years, and that's why I started to Toastmasters. Does it change? No, I still have some nightmares, but this time, not about fear. This time, I saw my, I see my back, my past, and say, Tana, you could do better. Thank you, and back to you. Thank you, Tana, for your nice answer. So, our second speech, our second question. Can you tell us a leadership story which you experience? It may be your experience or an experience which you witness. And for this question, I will pick our district director, Lilian Shaftakolo. Thank you very much. An interesting leadership story that I'd like to share with you tonight has to do with conflict. I was a new leader in Toastmasters and I found myself chairing a TLI session. We had invited many people from different areas and I was very proud. But then people started fighting. They complained that the people from one club were not giving enough time and effort to the project. The people of the other club came and said that the first club was too focused on just doing certain things and was actually neglecting everything and everybody else. So there I was, a relatively new leader, and I started feeling desperate because instead of my beautiful project going smoothly with everybody being so happy to work together, whoa, they were fighting. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it almost turned me off leadership for good. But fortunately, I was able to turn to my Toastmasters mentor who guided me and explained that I should sit down separately with each party, talk to them, find out exactly what their problem was. And then I could find common ground and start bringing everybody together to work as a unified team. Whoa, it was difficult, but in the end it worked ladies and gentlemen. And I'm proud to say it was a good TLI and I learned a very valuable lesson. Thank you. very much, dear Lilian Shaftakola. So, our third question. How do you invest your personal development? And I'm going to check the saloon, which is very crowded, kind of. 
So Nur Shah. Right. We are kind of a huge widened space. I feel myself in this way. So I feel that there is a billions of areas that I still didn't discover. The kind of an investment in the uh, trigger of mine is mostly related with understanding that absences. Where am I standing and what kind of edges do I have, which I can still concure. Relying on that purpose, I have been trying to learn, which is mostly related with my major as an industrial engineer, and also which, which are related with my enthusiasm, which are most being a good speaker, being a good leader. And in addition to that, which is more mentally held and more relief and relaxed person and trying to meditate and research on the management of the relationships and etc., which are mostly related to human basics. So that three main basic tools help me to discover that space for a while. And I know that there is a millions of edges that I can discover more. Thank you. Continue. Nowadays, everyone talking about, not maybe everyone, but we can mostly hear metaverse. So that metaverse, what is metaverse for you? What is that metaverse? So I will check the participants again and choose someone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So I will pick, wait a minute. If I pronounce correctly, Wafa Oven. I'm sorry, forgive me. I am at the office. I was listening to a phone call. Can you repeat the question? Okay. Uh, what is metaverse for you? So it's the famous topic nowadays. So have you heard about it? And what is means for you? That term metaverse. So I'm going to do the unthinkable and talk about something else. Okay, it's up to you. All right. I am so grateful for the opportunity to listen to Andrew today. And I was thinking about, it's not just the vocal variety, but it's also the body movement. So for instance, when earlier we listened to the speech, I was imagining the speaker not only talking about relying on memory, but also kind of like take a, make a pause and just pretend like she forgot that we need to really rely on our memory. So it's very important to really add the gestures and body movements, body language to really enhance our presentation. So I like to encourage all of us to also combine the gestures with the vocal varieties in order for us to spice our speeches. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Last question, how pandemic affect you when you're thinking generally? How pandemic affect you when you're thinking generally? So for that question, I will pick Fulia Gektuma. Thank you. Hello. Uh, hello. Rather than many of the people uh, pandemic effect 
pandemi affected me in a positive way also. I would like to talk about that positive way because uh, I think that I make more time for the trainings. I make more time for working on my projects and uh, I, I have more time uh, working on my targets. For example, I would like to have some trainings about astrology, about learning a new language, about making a new sport, new sport. And I can make all that by online with Zoom meetings or uh, kind of online trainings, etc. So I think in a positive way about pandemic that I could have more chance to complete my ambitions by being at home, by being in lockout, but I never thought in a negative way. So as long as I am healthy, my beloved ones are healthy, and all the people are doing good in pandemic, I will continue in a positive way either way. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, oh, thank you very much for your nice answers and see you at the next sessions. Thank you, Osgun, as our topics master today. And thank you to all our topic speakers. I wanted to give you all a little bit of feedback. And do you know what I'm going to do to start off with? I'm going to give feedback to topics master on the voice because I want him to be included and get his feedback too. Here we go. Now, the thing that I noticed about Osgun's voice is that he's got really good middle sounds and really good higher sounds. I'd like to hear some more of the lower sounds come into the voice as well. So I'm going to give you all of this little exercise that's really good for just trying out and finding those lower sounds in our voice. I start on a note, which is kind of in the middle somewhere, something comfortable. You hear I go downwards, a bit like an aeroplane landing. So you can do it on an M if you like, on an M. And you take the sound, you take it down as far as you can go. Sometimes as you go down the scale, the sound breaks up a bit. Don't worry, eventually we open up more notes. We're just gonna get the voice a bit more relaxed onto the breath with some lower sounds. Here we go, so we breathe. Mm. Would you like to have a go with your voices? Take a nice low breath. Mm. Mm. And you take it right down into the lower sounds. Because the thing is, if we don't ever explore the lower sounds and we sit in the middle or higher most of the time, then we don't access them. So we need to do something to get to, to find those sounds. Yeah, one more time, we're gonna breathe. Mm. And that allows, as you can hear when I get down there, I can speak in those sounds for a little while. So that's a little bit of feedback for Osgun, who gave us a great topic session today. My first, well done, my first speaker was Tuana and she had to tell us about what public speaking meant to her. I would have liked again to hear the lower qualities on the voice on the idea of a nightmare. It's a nightmare and really make something of the nightmare so that we've got a contrast when she tells us how she's improved. She's gone through nightmare, she's gone through fear and then she's gone to the point where through Toastmasters, she's improved her public, speak, public speaking. So there's different qualities to think about, different intentions to think about there in the progression of the topic. But there was a really good pacing in terms of speed. I thought to it, Tuana did really well today. So that's great, great content. Lillian came and gave us a leadership story. One of the great things I think about Lillian when she speaks is that she has clarity. You always hear the beginning and the end of each word and they're said with expression. There's always use of contrast in the story. I would have liked to, when she was talking about the two different clubs that she was trying to gather together in that meeting and one club was wanting to do this and the other club was wanting to do something else, I would have liked her to have used the whole, to have used the screen and maybe have done it as a dialogue 
we were doing dialogues earlier on. Maybe we could play that a bit more as a dialogue because it would give us even more variation of voice to play it out as a dialogue and tell it as a story in that way. Uh, the feeling of being desperate brought a new vocal quality and I liked that. The feeling I was feeling desperate, new vocal quality in there. That was really, really good. So let's keep on with this work on contrasts and using dialogue, all of us in our speeches. Well done to Lillian. Now, Nubanu came to us and she gave us a speech about development. What I like particularly now is her sense of enthusiasm combined with the improvement in her pacing, her vocal pacing. I think that through this session, she's heard something, she's understood something about the speed of speaking, and she's beginning to deliver more in the way of emphasis to us. So well done. She gave us a three point structure. Well done for that. When we're meditating, I think we could have taken a more leisurely pace over the idea of meditation, because that's what meditation is. It's relaxing and focusing. Maybe something of a change of contrast in the voice there, but much better on pacing through working on that session. So well done to Nibanu. And then we had Wafe came to us and she dared to speak about something which wasn't the topic. Well, that's fine. If you don't know what the topic's about, you can speak on something that's different. It's not a problem. I like the idea that she was talking to us about the combination of movement and expression. When we are trying to get into flow, a sense of flow in our speech, it's useful to use the gestures. But gestures must come from inside our words. We must be very careful that the gestures we use, we don't impose them on top of the words. They come from the inside. They come because they have meaning. They're part of what we've been doing a lot of in this. We've been talking about intention, what we mean by our words. And so it's the intention that gives us the feeling and the gesture and the gesture helps us to flow. And indeed, it does improve our vocal quality. So well done to Wefe for bringing that out. Somebody had asked a question about it in the chat. I was going to do it in the Q&A. But well done to her for bringing up that point. It was a great encouragement. And I enjoyed her topic this evening. For you to talk to us about the pandemic with a great sense of flow. No problem in finding words. Great sense of flow and quite a lot of expression. Let's go even further in expressing our meaning and daring. You know, this is partly what I got you to do in the exercises, all of you today, was to really open up. Open up perhaps in a way that was new to you. Maybe you're not used to this interactive way of working. It's different and you have to acclimatize to it like you would acclimatize to a temperature. But really, you're doing very well, all of you. And Fuya started to open up as a speaker. She gave us great content. And I particularly enjoyed her sense of expression this evening. I think we can pursue the expression even more with the exercises. You'll be getting those two articles, all of you. So use them and continue to pursue your sense of expression. I think I'm going to round up this part of the workshop with a little bit of a poem for you. It's a poem that goes through all the parts of the body that we've been thinking about as we've found our best vocal qualities tonight. OK, let's do that. So I want you to just sit back. You can shut your eyes and you can visualize as I go through the poem. OK, visualize the parts of the bodies that we've been using tonight. So just relax back. It's a nice moment for you. My soul is in my breath. And with my breath. I will lift up my voice in speech. And my breath shall be turned into sound. And I'll pour forth my voice even from the depths of my lungs. My neck shall be as a temple around the sound. And its spaces will adorn every single phrase with fullness of tone. I will speak with my breath as with my soul sharing the language of my life, for I am in my breath, in my voice. All will hear me and understand. Great. Gently come back. Wonderful. We've got time for some question and answer. So if you'd like to drop questions to me in the chat, I'll take as many as I can. 
and we'll we'll do some Q and A together. Question and answer. Here we go. Anybody got any questions today? Well, I sent a question uh, hey. to Mina, but I can. All right, take the sent it to Mina. Long. Mina, have okay. got questions for me? Let me ask you. Uh, for, first of all, thank you for your wonderful um, training. You can say uh, the first. Our first question is that uh, how Andrew modulate his voice according to his audience, like working with colleagues from uh, US, you need to be more alive and active rather than compared to working with colleagues from Asia. Also, yes, so I think that's true, Mina, I think that's true. I think that we develop through going to different countries and I've been doing, this workshop has been to 32 different countries so far with Toastmasters. And I think that it's true that culturally in different countries, we expect something different from our speakers. That's true. Um, I think the basic pattern for getting your voice to work successfully is the same. It means doing your workshop, your, your warm up before you give your presentation. I would add into that warm up that normally before you go on stage, you should be working on the opening of your presentation. So you practice the first few lines of your presentation just to break the ice. You know, we do a speech in Toastmasters, we call it icebreaker. If you practice the opening lines of your speech and you've done some warm up with your voice, you've done some humming, some exercises, you already break a little bit the ice before you go into the speaking space. As to adapting to your audience, I think that you need, before you go, to speak in another country, you need to be aware a little bit. Maybe you can look at other people giving presentations online. There's so much open to us now on YouTube, for instance. Maybe you can look at some other presentations that people are giving and maybe hear if there are people responding to those presentations as well and, and, and just adapt. It's true that in certain contexts, people do tend to speak in maybe a more lively manner. I think that whatever we're doing, we have to be engaging. And that's why I call this your engaging voice. And when I use the term engaging, for me, it means that we're connecting with our audience. And I think that even online, we get a sense of that, as well as in a room. So in terms of, of modulation for me, I might, for instance, go slightly slower in a room where I have folks who speak English as a second language and speak it less well, if I'm aware. If I'm aware, I would ask the organizer normally, before I go to give a presentation, I would ask the organizer about the audience that I'm going to speak to. This is what we call audience awareness. And I would ask them and hopefully they would give me some information about the background of the people that are listening. And then I would try to modulate according to that information. Part of it, I think you can only do on the day. You learn on the day. You get the feel of an audience on the day. Uh, but I do think you can ask questions in advance. Okay. And Alessandro, I would like to ask you a question about, yes. we have different accent and different background of education. So my question is related, how to connect intention to the voice? Still, my question related voice engagements. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about accents. Everybody has an accent from somewhere. For instance, I live in the UK. In the UK, people from the north of England don't sound the same as people from the south of England. Yeah. Um, if we hop over to Ireland, where I've got a lot of my friends, in Ireland, there's several accents in Ireland. There's different accents everywhere. What counts the most for us, for our engaging um, communication and speech, is that we gain clarity. And you'll have noticed that we did some exercises this evening which were vocal variety exercises, but they were also diction exercises. They worked on the clarity of our speech. Some people will come towards voice coaches and they will ask for something called accent reduction. And what they're looking for in that situation is what we call received pronunciation English. 
that is a situation you, you can do that. If, for instance, somebody, you're giving presentations and you find that you often get the feedback or we, we couldn't quite understand you. You're indistinct. We can't understand your accent. If you have that feedback a lot, it can be very disturbing for the speaker. You know, it's really, it's depressing when people say that they don't understand you. And therefore you might go and consult someone on a regular basis to do exercises to improve your clarity in your spoken language. But overall, I would say that clarity is the main thing and every single person has an accent. So as long as the accent isn't stopping you from being understood, you're going to engage with your audience. Try and you have the clarity, try and you have the beginning. You know, in English, in the English language, it's really important to have the first sound of the word and the last sound of the word, because we use our consonants a lot. <laughs> so it's really important that you have clarity. Does that answer your question? Good, it's a good idea. Thank you, excuse me. I'm Thank you, to... Thank you very much. Great, here we go. Okay, the, the next question. Uh, how do you practice and prepare your contest speech yourself? What are your steps do you follow to give an idea to our, our contestants? Lovely. Yeah, I have done quite a lot of competing. I'm D91 Table Topics Champion this year, which was great fun. Um, and I've got quite, I've done quite a lot of competitions. And, um, what I would say, if you're doing the prepared speech in a contest, the inter international speech, I start out, I start to create my script but to create my script, I'm already speaking aloud the ideas. Because I find that that way, what I get on my written page afterwards is already alive as spoken word. So I mix the speaking and the preparing the script together. Once I've got my script, I want to play around with it. I want to find the best words to express my ideas, the best words to make that connection. So. I will then go into a situation where, for instance, coming onto Zoom has been great, I think, because you can go into your Zoom room and you can record yourself practicing your speech. And I will experiment and I will try things out and I will realize that sometimes things aren't quite, don't come across the way I want them to. So I'll change my words, but I practice. When we come to, I, I quite often try to practice a speech in several clubs as well. You know, I'm lucky I've been around to a lot of clubs doing lots of different workshops, table topics ones as well. Uh, so I get invites to speak sometimes. So I might try out and practice my speech in other clubs and get feedback because feedback is important for all of us. No matter how advanced you are as a speaker, feedback is important. We can always go better. We can always learn. And also the way you hear your speech is not necessarily the way that other people receive it. So it's important for us. And then I will allow a little time where I settle the speech, which by which I mean that I won't go to, uh, to deliver it in clubs for a little while. I allow it to settle and take in all the feedback I've been given. I might go back and practice online a bit more myself. On the day of contest, I always warm up. So I'll always do some voice exercises and I'll try out the opening lines of the speech a few times so that when I go into that speaking space, I'm in a sense of flow. I don't have to arrive in the speaking space and create the speech there. I bring the idea of the speech with me. And that's how I set up my speeches if I'm doing something prepared. But it's not too different if I'm doing something impromptu, to be honest. If I'm doing the impromptu speaking, I meet up with a group of friends and they fire table topics at me for about 10 minutes and I answer table topics. Uh -huh. And that's how I warm up for those. Okay, so uh, Fahad coming in uh, or someone else? Uh, okay, uh, I have one more question. Then okay. can you uh, ask her? What advice do you have for members whose English is on foreign language to work on their accent? to ensure listeners understand their message. Right. One of the best things you can do is practice reading aloud. When we're at school, we learn word recognition. 
okay? We learn to know that a certain set of letters makes a certain word. That's fine. But then after doing maybe a little bit of reading to the teacher or teaching assistant, we lose contact with that. I think that one of the best ways to improve the clarity of your voice is to find and do some reading aloud. So you might use poetry, you might use prose. So you might use an extract from a book, any book, it can be a novel, it can be a detective novel, it can be an action story, anything you like, but read aloud, read aloud from a newspaper. Reading aloud is a really important step because it makes you, it encourages you to go and form the words and go all the way through the words. If we don't ever get into this stage of saying things aloud before we practice our speeches, then I don't think we quite make the connection. Uh, there are some diction exercises you'll be receiving from me anyway. Practice them. Practice them and practice going right to the end of the words, which we do in English. Yeah. I get you to go right to the end of the words. So practice your diction, diction exercises, read aloud. Anything it can be poetry, it can be books, anything, read aloud. Get used to the sound of your own voice and get used to making sure that you're pronouncing all those sounds. Now, I know that when we're in a second language and I speak several languages, so I understand that if English is your second language, it's a bit more complicated. I would also encourage you, therefore, to listen. If you can get access to really good quality English radio station, for instance, if you can access BBC World Service, for instance, somewhere where you can listen in, maybe if you listen properly, maybe for half an hour a day, so that la the sound of the language is going into your ear and you're hearing it spoken and hopefully spoken well, <laughs> then I think that helps as well. Again, it's about working on your ear and working on the mechanics of speaking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think Farhat was waiting. Yeah, I think Farhat was waiting. So let's hear from Farhat. Well, yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Andrew. I really appreciate this wonderful uh, discussion. Um, my question is uh, some, some, is public speakers uh, when they are in the stage, they speak long and they are long wide while the others are speaking shortly, which they when they when they are speaking. So is it is it good to speak long or short when it comes to engaging the people? That's my question. I think now what you're really talking about, Fahad, is the length of the sentences that they give. Um in general, when people are starting out in Toastmasters, we encourage them to produce sentences in their speech, which are short, shortish and concise, concise sentences, because they're easier to say and they may be easier for the audience. It depends on what you want to say. Sometimes you may have a slightly longer sentence, but I think it goes back as well to what I was doing when I was working with Nubanu earlier on which is we were talking about the key words, the key meaning words in your sentence. So I think that you should judge the length of what you say according to the key ideas and the key words, yeah? I, I, I think that's the way that I, I think that's the way I operate when I do it. And I think that's the way I've encouraged people to do it the most, which is that you know what the main idea you want to get across is. Now, to choose and to use expressive words, because we do need to use expressive words, because they open up people's imaginations when we use expressive words, and they open up our imagination too. That means the sentence might be a bit longer, but as long as we put the emphasis on the word that means the most in the idea, we should be okay, whether the sentence is long or short. Within Toastmasters, we teach people to speak also within a certain time limit. For instance, an average speech in the Pathways is five to seven minutes. That's Pathways is our education program and it's full of speeches that you can prepare. And we work mostly to five to seven minutes. 
as we get more advanced, the speech projects become longer, 10 minutes and, and much wider. When you complete a path, path, you have a speech which can be 20 minutes. Um, if you're going out to speak professionally to the public, hopefully the organiser will say, we would like you to give a presentation of this length of time. You have 15 minutes, say. So you are going to adjust your speech content to your audience, to you're going to, the audience has an awareness. They have, they, they want something from you. You're going to speak maybe as an expert on your topic. They're looking for a response from you. Uh, may, may I say something? Yeah. yeah I, I get your point, but what, what I'm talking is engagement. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking. You know, is it good for to, to speak long rather than speaking shorter when it comes to engaging your audience? So that's my I think it, I don't think it matters, to be honest. I think what matters is well, 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 that you, well, well, you present the key idea. When we listen, yeah. first, for example, when we listen to TEDx, they, they speak long. For example, they speak 18 minutes. So for that time of longness, uh, some of the audience, they, they, they lose the engagement. So is it good for to speak short rather than speak long, which I think is long wider? Yeah, Fahad, I think that, well, for a start, when we're starting out doing presentations, we do shorter presentations because we don't have the experience to hold an audience's attention through a long presentation at that stage. So I think that's true. As you develop it as, as a speaker, so you can do more and use more your time on stage and you can do longer presentations. Um, there are fabulous speakers on the, on the TEDx. There are some fabulous speakers, but there are others who don't have that experience. They're there because they have maybe expertise in a particular field and an interesting topic, but they haven't necessarily developed the speaking skills to be able to engage an audience over a long period. So it might be a bit variable. Yeah. I got your point. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else we need to hear from? Yeah. I would like to ask you, I'm from Florida, a question related to the accent is tip. For example, someone he has been speaking their language more than 10 years or 15 years. But the problem is. He memorized he or he adapted wrong accent. How he can change or how he can change this wrong accent? The most important thing, mm. I think, mm. is that they start by listening, mm. listening to good, a yeah. good standard accent. Mm. So you you, uh, you can do that. For instance, there are talking books. We can all access them easy. You can even get them free on yeah. your Kindle. You know, you can you can get talking books. Listen to talking books read by good actors, read by good actors. Good. Yeah. Who who will give you so you've got the sound of the language again. Because that's about really re-educating and it's re-educating on two sides. Mm. Re-educating the ear and then re-educating the way of pronunciation. To re-educate the pronunciation, I think you do go and consult somebody who is a voice practitioner, mm -hmm. yeah, a speaking coach, speaking coach, mm -hmm. who's going to give you exercises adapted. And when I say adapted, I mean that they will give you, if say you have a weakness with certain sounds, say your, your P, your P and your, your D, your D don't always sound particularly good. And that in the middle of the sentence, it's, it gets a bit weak and we don't understand. They will give you exercises to strengthen up the sounds that you find difficult. And also gradually through listening and the combination of listening and practicing the speech, the accent will, will even out. Takes time, takes time. Thank you, thank you very much. I get a bunch. That's cool. Anyone else coming in on this or should we wind up? I think we ought to wind up really. But that's good. Do you know, I've loved being with you all this evening. You've done some fantastic work. I'm aware that my way of working with you online and working on voice, I'm very interactive. And some of the ideas and things may have come as a surprise to you.
But take the ideas, make them your own. Practice, experiment with using your voices. Experiment with your speaking and your public speaking skills. You've made a great step because you've come here this evening to learn these things. It's been great to work with you. I would say a huge thank you to Meltem for inviting me and to Barna and, and all the team here in the club. You've been fantastic. It's been a joy to work with you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. To, we're very excited to listen. Thank you coaching. very much, Andrew. It's great meeting you. And thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, thank you all. Can we take one photo together, please? Uh, would you please open your video if you wish? There they come. Can we take a photo together, please? Uh, Andrew, we want to big applause to you. It was amazing meeting. Thank you so much, Andrew. It was really fun. And I want to thank also Mukhtar, Division H team, and uh, Roger, Pulia, Suna, Natalie, dear Lillian, Ahmed, Mine, Tarkan, Gamze, Abdullah, Wafe, and Payam, and Fahad. We would like to thank you a lot. Thank you so much. And also here, Özgün Kaplama, Tuana, Arket, Nurbanu, Serhat, we would like to thank each one of you. All of you, and we're going to stand near to our uh, roll ups, and our friends are going to take the photo, okay? So put your big smile. All right, we're, we're saying Gloria in here, but we're going to be clear fine. Yeah. Show it all. And one more from the yeah, screenshots. Tawana. Can everyone join us? Can everyone join us? Tawana. 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 Yeah. yeah. I took the camera. Someone else. OK. Now you want to finish screen? Please squeeze your back. Sure. OK, one, two, three. Tawana, can you just come in? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> OK, that's the best. <laughs> one, three, two, oh. one. It's because of the background you put, I think. Vision HT. It's about the background. Thank you so much for your help, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Andrew, do you mind sharing any contact information? Maybe for questions after the session. Yeah. Oh, it's a very my, good idea. My email address is on the two articles that you will receive. My okay, contact's great. on there. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Thank Have a great you, everybody. evening, Have a everybody. Good evening. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Thank, Thank you, Roma. So see you. Thanks so much. Yak Shamlar, Yak Shamlar. Yak Shamlar. Thank you so much. Aldık ya.